Okay. Um, I wanted to give a little lecture to talk about good writing programs using, you know, good Haskell style. A lot of some of the homework that I've been seeing coming in are um, submitting the programs work, but they're just not really written in the style of Haskell. And so part of learning Haskell was learning how to write or even just learning functional programming is learning how to write in a functional style. And part of the power of Haskell that some other functional languages like Lisp and Scheme and uh, Clojure don't have is the pattern matching. So we've got pattern matching that's really powerful and people are not really using it. And so here's an example of one of the problems on the homework is pull K X's is, um, you know, you're, you're trying to pull off K elements from the last K elements cons onto the lift. And so um, you want to pull them off. And so one thing is, is that if they're zero or, and we'll write, less than or equal to zero, then um, we're going to return the empty list. And that's just a way to um, help um, with, you know, a negative input. If you got a negative input, just return the neg the empty list. Now, if um, X is is the empty list, then what do you want to do? Well, in that case, you also want to return the empty list because the last, you know, nothing has been const onto the empty list. So getting the last K things, I just get nothing. I get the empty list. And otherwise, what do I do? Um, well, I look and I say, okay, this is where the magic of recursion comes in. But what do I need? I need the head of X's. I got to glue that. That's something I want because K is in range. Um, I want to glue that on to the recursive call with K minus one and um, the tail of X's. Okay, so now this program will do what we want. Well, we'll test it just a little bit in a, in a minute. But um, if you look up here, though, at the type um, that, that um, VS Code is telling me this has, it says A must be an E. I understand that, okay, T has to be a number. And numbers are ordered. So T is ordered as well as a number. But what's this EQA arising from? Well, in here, well, and, and order, the order is arising from here, actually, is that less than or equal to requires ordering. So here, what about this equal equal? This is, this is requiring the EQ. And all, what am I doing? I'm just checking that X's is the empty list. And I don't actually need to know how to decide equality on elements of the list. A better, much more efficient way of doing this is to just say, oh, the list null. Is the list empty? That doesn't require, it's a predicate that's very uh, quick. I mean, you know, you can write it like this. You can say null empty equals true. And then you can say, no, actually, well, okay, x colon x is equals false. And that's a complete function. It's defined for every kind of list input because every list has to either be the empty list or it has to be a cons. 
and it's null is true on the empty list. And this doesn't examine the elements of the list in any way. In fact, in Haskell, there's a way to write. You can just write underscore, meaning I don't really care what that list, what that first argument looks like. If it's empty, I know it's true and anything else, it's false. So this is almost like a I don't care pattern. Okay, so that's what null does, and it doesn't require equality, so it simplifies the type of this. So here's the type of this, and okay, let me see if I can open a terminal, uh, new terminal, okay, and I'll run ghci in it, and I'll load, oh, did I save it? I'm not sure. I'll, um, And then I can try out my new function. I can say, okay, what about pull minus one, one dot dot ten? This should be the empty list. Good. Pull zero, one dot dot ten. Okay, that's the empty list. Um, what about pull two, one dot dot ten? That's two. What about pull a hundred off of one dot dot ten? Okay. That's, oops, I mistyped pull. That's the whole list. Okay, so pull works the way that we want it to, but it's not written really very, uh, it's not really written in a Haskell style. This is what you would expect, you know, a C programmer, or JavaScript programmer who's learning functional programming to write. One of the great powers of Haskell is pattern matching. So I can say, and, you know, and pattern matching gives me a way to write functions defined by recursion on the structure of a list, in this case, or in general, the structure of a data type. But lists are either the empty list or they're constructed using cons. And so these are the only two ways that lists can be constructed. Now, no, I'd say 98%, 99% of the functions that you want to write by recursion on lists can be written in this with this basic pattern. And so what is pull? If I want to pull k things off the empty list, we said up here, if the list is empty, return the empty list. So that the base case is really easy. Now, what do we want to do down here? Well, now, if I want to take into account this less than or equal to thing, I got to say, like, if k is less than or equal to 0, then no. Else, now here's the recursive call, and what do I want to do? I want to take the head of the input. Well, down here, I've destructured the input, so I have a handle. X is the name, X is the same thing as, as the head. X is the same thing as the head of X colon X's, so why not just write X? And x's is the same thing, so I could just write x cons on to the recursive call with k minus 1 x's. And so that, I think, is a bit clearer code. And, okay, I guess I should have given it a different name. Let me call it pull prime just so I can load the two of them. Um, pull prime. And first thing to notice is it's got the same type. And so doesn't mean it's equal, but um, <clears throat> I think I can do prop. Well, I'd have to go up here and say <clears throat> import quick check. Okay, and then down here we could write a little property.
and it's going to take an int. Oh, and let's just um, let's just check it on lists of ints. Although we could do it on the more general type. Um, okay, I save that. Come down here. Load my style file. Oh, I forgot to write the function. Okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> Prop. Pull EQ EQ. It takes a K and a list X's. And I want it to check that um, pull K X's is equal equal to pull prime K X's. Save that. Come down here. Load style. Ah, right. I gave it the wrong type up here. That's the type of pull. So I got to say bool. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now I can say quick check. And I passed 100 tests. So those two things are equal. Pull and pull prime are equal. Now, there's still a way to make this, I think, uh, even a little bit more clear is to do the following thing. And I can write pull double prime K empty and pull double prime K X colon X's. And here I just say empty. And now here you don't write this equal sign because I'm going to give two different definitions. One's going to say suppose K is less than or equal to zero. In that case, this function is equal to empty list and otherwise and otherwise it's equal to the recursive call k minus one x is with the x stuck onto the front now, I think if I ask it to format this thing, it will maybe move some equals around. No, it didn't bother to do anything. I thought maybe it might push that out like that. It doesn't care. Okay. So now, I don't know, is this more readable? I've always found it a little bit confusing because there's no equal sign after the definition. And you put the equal signs down here on the cases. But you get to put arbitrary Boolean valued code down here so you can sort of check what certain things. Like, okay, is K less than or equal to zero? Up here we said, okay, um, if k is less than or equal to zero, then we return the other empty list, and otherwise we do this. Now, otherwise, I think, you know, otherwise is just true. I could have written in this bit of code here instead of saying otherwise. I could say true. That's a Boolean value. And, you know, I get the same thing. But otherwise, um, reads a little bit more like you know what you what you might expect so anyway is this one let's see if i can get these two on the same page i don't know um
Is this one clearer than that one? I'm not sure. I mean, this still has that if-then-else in it, and this one breaks it out and shows you explicitly what the cases are. Um, I can load this. Um, I could check that. I could change this property. I can check it. has 100 tests. So this is the same as the first one. So anyway, this is just a little lecture about Haskell style. I think this, after you get used to it, certainly this is maybe a little bit easier to save. But I would say that um, if I just close this terminal, I can show you the, all the code. So here's three programs, and I could get rid of this. Quick check. Here's three programs that all do the same thing. And the question is, which one's most readable? So now, why is it working? Why is this Haskell doing something here? What are we avoiding? Well, we're avoiding having to destruct the list when we, in this case, after we know that the w list is not null, here we know the list must look something like this. And if the list looks like that, here on the left-hand side of the equals, we can say, oh, the list is, is a head const on to a tail. Call the head X. And so then here in my code, well, and that's why maybe this is a little equal, easier to read, I can say just use X as the instead of head of x's and i can just use x's instead of just tail of x's and this is a very powerful thing i guess i should say there's one more oh my all this oh thing is getting old but all right three and here i could say um And here I could say case X's of, and I could say, okay, look, if it's the empty list, and here it's not an equal, it's an arrow, return the empty list. And if it's something that looks like, uh, you know, a Y colon Y's, then return the, um, Now I do my cursive call. Oops. Okay, and so pull. Cool triple prime. There's another definition. There's a case statement if you're down inside and you not didn't de deconstruct at the upper level, you can deconstruct things down inside your code. So I still think, you know, that I don't know, this pull prime or pull double prime are sort of the best examples, but pull triple prime is another example, and you might see that if you were, you know, needed to examine the case, you know, the possible structure or something down inside. Okay. Well, I hope that helps you write easier to read programs. Thank you. Bye.